I'm not Jordan. This is unedited. <laughs> oh, are you okay? Thank you. <laughs> you need a hand? <laughs> what is happening? You are just having a bad time. Eh? You need a hand up? <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't fall that way. <laughs> Well, welcome to Unedited. So happy that you're tuning in. As you can see, this is not Jordan. <laughs> yeah. I am happy to say that Ethan is joining us today. Uh, Jordan couldn't be here this week. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, it's COVID, but it is not COVID. He could not be here today. So Ethan has stepped in. Uh, Ethan's been my friend and coworker for a long time. Mm -hmm. He's super talented in many different areas. <laughs> he works with our youth in our community, which is really exciting as well. And he has a fabulous wife who yep. is my friend. I'd be inclined to agree. I think so, yep. Mm -hmm. And so anyways, we've known each other quite a while. We've traveled together, done things together. So hopefully we're gonna have a good episode today. <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't know what to expect when it comes with Ethan. So <laughs> when it comes to Ethan, so we will just see. But we're gonna have a lot of fun and I'm excited that you're here today. Thank you. So we're gonna go straight into the news um, and on a happier note, I wanna say, because a lot of the news right now is really not that happy yeah and the month of january can be kind of sucky for a lot of people whether it's um you know seasonal depression maybe it's the christmas you know after the christmas and you got this mm -hmm. like january blues kind of thing mm -hmm. so instead we've decided that we're not going to talk about those top stories today instead i want to laugh we want to have some fun <laughs> <laughs> which shouldn't be hard with him. Um, yeah, I was reading an article online that was just talking how important it is to laugh. And I know we know that, but mm. it is truly important to laugh. And even at silly, stupid things that are out there on TikTok videos and social media, mm -hmm. to have some fun. So one of the things I really like is Jimmy Fallon's games are always really ridiculous yeah. and really funny. Now, we might not be as funny because we're not these like super cool <laughs> famous people <laughs> but we actually got to go there together to yeah we saw the studio i forgot about that yeah so i thought oh, oh yeah. this kind of works well because we've been in that studio together yeah. and did wow. this like pretend do you remember when we had to like pretend that we were on yeah, the yeah there's like we pretended like, to play instruments and stuff yeah. i was the cameraman <laughs> yeah i didn't <laughs> they were a... like you get to be the camera guy <laughs> and, you just, like, and you just sit there like <laughs> I, was, I was ashley is what i was <laughs> oh yes yeah ashley behind the scenes yeah. <laughs> but anyways yeah so we're gonna do that today so we didn't want to get too messy um so we've decided to do something a little more low-key it's kind of like catchphrase if you're familiar with catchphrase um we had somebody else arrange five heads each five human famous people heads on these papers and Wise i'm gonna heads. put one up and he's gonna try to get me to guess it and then vice versa um ashley's only giving us 15 seconds per head and then she's gonna chime in ding in whatever to let us know and see if we know these so let's find out um and just a disclaimer if we do not know who you are and you're one of these heads we apologize in advance <laughs> just dwayne the rock johnson's watching then, yeah. like, <laughs> you don't know who i am i'm in no, jumanji that one i would know that one i would know i would yeah. know i actually yeah. referred to jumanji today while we were out in the wilderness but anyways <laughs> okay okay you go first i think you need to go first so i lift one first yeah and then i gotta get okay. to you to say it so this is the one that she's trying to get me to guess yeah Okay. <laughs> Do I hold it here? Like, hello! Yeah. <laughs> no, I can see through it. I, I didn't see anything, but if you hold it up to the Okay, this is really easy. This one's easy. I know this one. Okay. Okay. Used to be the president of the United States. Barack Obama. No, a totally lamer president. George W. That. Bush. <laughs> no! Like the most controversial president of all oh, time. Okay, okay. George Sr. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? Okay, Donald Trump. Two. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. I was like, gonna go for the hair. Yeah, oh, nice. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. We got that one. And you did it in 15 seconds. Woo! Okay, me next. Mm hmm. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be hard to get you to figure it out. Um, he's got really nice white teeth. Okay. Pretty handsome. That could be anyone. <laughs> that could be anyone. Uh, you can mistake his head for a boulder. He's bald. Yeah. <laughs> that was time? Are you purposely no! trying to, not to get it? I was it? leading her on. Oh my gosh. You have 15 seconds. You're no! purposely trying to make me lose. Okay, you can get this. No, no you should have guessed. No. I would have got that ah, one. I forgot about the timer. Oh, we ooh. literally, we did not plan that. That That's crazy that that person, anyways, yeah, go. I thought it would okay. be funny to lead you on, but it was too long. Okay. So I see your strategy. You're just going to do that so I lose. No, 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 no. Oh, you, no, I think it's that I lose if you don't get it because I fail. 
because you got right. Okay, that right? makes, that more makes sense. sense. Right, that makes more sense. Okay, so this is Yasmin's next <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> oh, she's a famous uh, talk show host. Big hair. She interviews everyone who's a partner. She's got her own magazine, her Oprah. own channel. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Oprah. Wow. That was easy. That's all. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty okay. quick. Yeah. Are we ready? Uh, Fifteen seconds is not a lot of time. Okay. I feel wor <laughs> I feel worried about the shape Martha of Martha Stewart and him are homies. What a homie! Uh, lots of weed. Um, uh, like a oh, I can't ask questions. Uh, raps. Okay. There's Do lots of raps. <laughs> um, <laughs> Snoop Doggy. Dog. Yeah, <laughs> Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Nice. Why did you say Martha Stewart? I didn't. Because it's know. legit. They bake like wheat brownies together and stuff. Oh, what? they have like they had like a cooking show. Snoop Dogg. Or I don't know if it was like a recurring thing, but they did it once. <laughs> so, anyway, hey, hey. I was gonna say Kevin Hart in the Olympics. Did you see that? Did you watch him and Kevin Hart? On I the wouldn't Olympics? have known that one either. So funny. When, but you never him... said rap or till the end. Yeah. So then I there's a whole... I probably should have led with that. I think so. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I did it. Did I do it in 15 seconds? Okay, good. I think the belt. Went, sort of? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just say you did. Okay, your turn. For my sake. Okay, <laughs> this is the next one. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, he's in all of the Marvel movies, pretty much. Um, he's... Robert Downey Jr. S nope. Blue and red. He's got a shield. <gasps> the actor oh, of him. Oh, okay. Uh, Chris Evans. Yeah. I thought you were going Tom Holland. I didn't know. Yeah, Chris. I didn't know if I was allowed to see Captain America. I don't know the rules. But I guess uh... I could have. I didn't see why not. Yeah. That's not his real name. Because it's not name. his name. Yeah, Anyways, Chris. Chris, that's a good picture of him. If you're watching, Chris, hit me up. You didn't respond to my last text. Are you trying to grow your beard like him? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Even if I wasn't follically challenged, you can't match that Look at how perfect it is. <laughs> I know, it's so perfect. This man is a total piece, you know what I mean? Real snack. Totally. Okay, mm -hmm. ready? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's two. Oh, boy. Um, uh, <laughs> lots of uh, pop country vocal artist, uh, lots of breakup songs. Oh, pop con country? Uh, uh, Blank Space, one of her songs. Oh, um, Ta Taylor Swift. Yeah, does that count? That was like, uh, right after the bell, but she said ta ta before. I, uh, yeah. She just said Tay Tay. Tay Tay? <laughs> Who or says Tay Tay? Lots of people say Tay I don't know. I don't listen to her, so I don't know. Okay. I was... Shake it off. That's what I would have thought oh, of. Oh, yeah. I guess Blank Space is pretty old now. Yeah, but she's redoing all of her songs now. So it's what? like you hear really? yeah, her album. Oh. Yeah. And it's like all number one again. Really? Yep. Did you hear that album with her in the National? No. Oh. What was it? <laughs> well, in my opinion, it was pretty bad. But lots of people really like it. I like the National, but I don't like anyway. Anyways, moving on. We love you, Taylor. <clears throat> Tay Tay. We love Tay Tay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, go. It's uh, the next one. Oh, a famous basketball player who has shoes named after Michael him. Michael Jordan. Yep. Nice. What a, what a good looking fella. Michael Jordan. My boys Goat. love Air Jordans. It's like all the rage in the school. Yeah, I all know. Right. Shoes are a big thing. Do they do, do they talk about like Michael Jordan versus LeBron James and stuff? Mm -hmm. Who who do they side with? Who's the goat to them? I think LeBron James only because they're more familiar with him. Because he's in Fortnite. Oh, is that? Well, probably. <laughs> yeah, That's probably. Like, and George yeah. always like, I don't know if there was like a meme or something, but he always goes, LeBron James. Yeah, is there some it. kind that's of it. like yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah he always says video. it around the house all the time. I think it was a vine or something like that. <laughs> something. It's so funny. Yeah. And he says it perfectly. I clearly LeBron don't. LeBron James. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next one. This is a small head. <laughs> Spider Man. Yeah. Um, Toby Maguire. No. Um, Andrew uh -oh. Garfield. No, getting closer. <laughs> Tom Holland. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I pick all of them, but Tom Holland. <laughs> I like how you started at the beginning. I did. I started at the Back beginning. Back in the Sam yeah. Raimi days. You know. Okay. Okay. Last, Last one. Two. Yep. This is a uh, him. Oh, I love him. I have a tattoo of him. On oh, my it's back. actually a him. Yeah. Oh. Because oh. okay. I want to tell you that. No, Wait, I it's not 50 seconds. I have a tattoo of him on my back. You have a tattoo? Oh, Elvis roll. Presley. Yes. <laughs> nice. That's Man, a good one. That guy's a classic. He's handsome. This dude had a crazy life. I listened to a podcast about, yeah, anyway. I yeah, I read lots of books it. on He's him. Nuts. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Okay, last one. 
And this looks like a weird shaped head too. Oh, okay. Um, uh, boxing movies. He Don fought, King. He fought. <laughs> no, <laughs> he fought Creed. He, oh, fought Creed. Is that right? Um, I've never seen the movie, so. Oh. Uh, like the main character, Rocky. Yeah. Oh, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. I love Rocky. I mean, I think duh, we missed the duh, bell duh, again. Duh. But, yeah. I was trying to make a reference to that song for the training montage in Rocky, the first movie, right? Yeah. And he's like walking through the snow with the... Anyway. Well, and I didn't think of it right away because you said Creed, and then I know the new movies are called Creed. So yeah, then did I was he trying fight to think Creed? Of the... I thought that was Apollo the Apollo Creed, yes. Yeah, like yeah. that was his opponent in the... Yeah. Okay. Anyways, well, that was good. I'm pretty sure I won. Yeah, pretty easily. I think I kept on. <laughs> but I, kept I knew on all the people. The I knew all the people. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I guess we can look. Because Ashley them, right? was worried that uh, we weren't going to know the people. Yeah. No. This is good. Can you believe how much easier it is to walk in snow when you just fall right through it? Traction, four wheel drive. <laughs> I feel like I need to hold on to everything that I come across, but then it rips out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> You're like grabbing the tree. <laughs> You know what? I see lots of like snowshoers have walking sticks. That's what we should have. Uh, I think that's also uh, pretty familiar in the geriatric community. Oh my god. <laughs> Gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, dear, you're gonna like break your ankles. You go on the jungle there. <laughs> oh I can't do it, I can't go on top of that thing. It's probably just, it's a little too hot. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> well, we decided to go to Escape Sports and rent some snowshoes. Yeah. So it was quite the adventure, I would say, um, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> to say the, least. Uh, the people at Escape Swarps were awesome. Mm -hmm. And there was like so many different things I want to try now. So that was yeah. really cool having this local place downtown mm -hmm. on 19th Street that you can go check out. They're super awesome there. Tons of things like not just clothing and stuff, but you want to try skating or skateboarding or skiing or yeah. whatever. So anyways, yeah. it was really good. So we went there and then we went down by the river. And how did you like that? <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty smooth sailing for me. Um, not so much for Yasmin, <laughs> who couldn't keep her feet on her body. Well, my shoes wouldn't stay on, though. I feel like it's not my fault. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. There is something funky going on, but there's yeah. definitely more blunders uh, <laughs> recently than... But it was not. really nice to get outside. Yeah. It felt so good, even though it was kind of cold, but it felt really good yeah. to be outside and to get some exercise and go exploring. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I had problems with the snowshoes staying on my feet and yeah. then I fell over a lot and like, <laughs> like in slow motion. And so one of those slow sit down falls. It's like, I'm falling. <laughs> I'm just going to sit down here. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But I would say that like, it's actually in the winter time, lots of like we complain as Canadians about how cold it is, you know, and like just getting into your car for your daily commute or whatever, you can be like, it's so cold. Why would I be outside? But like, once you get outside. 
and you're like get so the bad. blood moving and stuff it's actually not that bad you know what i mean like just be prepared and it's like it's beautiful so refreshing and it's beautiful like yeah. i know snow i mean it's cold and all that but mm -hmm. the beauty down by the water and mm -hmm. like it was just it was awesome we really yeah. liked it so i would definitely do it again i do want to figure out the shoe situation though where they like actually <laughs> stay on my feet there's like a time i'm like running through the snow or walking i shouldn't say running walking whatever through the Trudging, snow maybe. and it felt hard and then i look behind me and my snowshoe is like quite a ways back. Just like, one boot, one shoe. <laughs> so. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then, so yeah, so then we warmed up in the car for a bit, took our shoes back, and then we went to the Drift Cafe, which is actually attached to it, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Another mm -hmm. local cafe. Uh, it's right across from the farmer market, these places. So if you've been down mm -hmm. there, um, yeah. and we had an awesome lunch and hot yeah. drinks. And it's really, it's like a cool decor in there. Like it feels very laid back. And I think that, that's what they're going for, right? Is to yep. make it feel, I mean, it's called Drift, right? So mm -hmm. it's kind of just chill, open space space where you can have a tasty drink or food well on each floor because there's like three levels we're like different mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yeah. like it's more coffee area down there and then you get up to the next level and they've got seats and mm -hmm. rustic things and then you go upstairs and there's all this greenery and it's yeah. really nice yeah. i really like the waitress too she was nice yeah absolutely good service yeah. yeah so yeah if you have time go check it out and if you are feeling those like winter blues that we're talking about nothing is better for you than um getting out into this outside whether it's cold or not getting on some snowshoes getting some exercise mm -hmm. uh it can help the mental health issues and it can i don't know put you in a good mood i don't know put me in a really good mood yeah get them endorphins pumping in your brain mm -hmm. yeah, yeah have some sun mm -hmm. so yeah check it out drift cafe and escape sports <laughs> So now we're going to go into the talk portion of our episode. And as you know, if you've been watching and following along, we started the book of Jonah last week. So Jordan got us into the very first few scriptures of Jonah. But we're going to take a pause on that while he's done and let our guest have the floor and share a bit of his heart, a bit of scripture that really stands out to him. And when he brought it up to me, I thought it was absolutely perfect um, in this time that things that are going on in the world and mm. well, actually just humans in general right yeah. like since forever so he's going to share some with us and some thoughts and we're going to go through that right now so yeah take it away yeah well so i mean something that's been <clears throat> on my mind recently a lot is how we deal with offense and how we deal with uh like being mistreated and stuff there's like a lot going on in the world right now yeah and sometimes it's hard to know like how you're supposed to respond to different situations and scenarios and so there's a specific response that jesus gave that I think is really interesting to mine some tidbits out of and stuff. So, Especially being offended because like being mm -hmm. offended is like a thing now. Yeah. Like like literally it's like when, yeah. it, when it's somebody not offended by something, right? So yeah. we do need to learn as humans how we should be reacting to those things, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah so as I was, uh, there's, there's this guy named Matthew who hung out with Jesus when he was alive. Uh, and in the first century CE, uh, there was like, recording done that Matthew just was like I need to write down these mm -hmm. things that Jesus said I need to make a record of these events as we like walked through life with this yeah. guy Jesus and so he records like a bunch of interactions that Jesus has had uh, and he thought it was pretty good news <laughs> so uh, the word that we use for good news like the the Greek word is gospel mm -hmm. and so the gospel of Matthew is what we call this book that Matthew wrote uh, but he was just like, this is good news. I'm going to write it down. So we called it after him. So in the book of Matthew, you can find this. Uh, and I'm Nowadays, just gonna... we would just uh, video it and then post it on YouTube, right? When all this cool stuff happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> when right. you say these great things, yeah. it would just be like, that's a TikTok video. It's like video. Pixar, it didn't happen. Yeah. It Instead, like pencil, yeah, or not even a pencil, but yeah. No. Um, anyways, Yeah, go. get out of here with your pencil. Yeah, no, not even a pencil. It needs to be digital. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I think that Matthew has a pretty cool account of what Jesus was saying. And so I'm just going to read what Jesus was saying in this specific section of the book of Matthew. Uh, and it, it's found in the markers of chapter 5, verses 38 to 48. And Jesus is talking to a group. So he's like, it's a teaching time when everybody's like sitting and listening to him. And he's like, you know, giving some, dropping some dope wisdom on them and stuff. Uh, and Jesus says, you've heard it. You've heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury. So talking about if somebody was to injure somebody, what the punishment would be. He says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, Jesus, do not resist an evil person. Or some other ways to say it is like, don't hit back at all. Mm -hmm. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, 
offer the other cheek also. And if you're sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands you to carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. <laughs> uh, give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. And then he just closes by saying, you've heard the law that says, again, quoting another law that was like prevalent at the time in the culture, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Mm -hmm. But I say to you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Mm -hmm. In that way, you'll be acting as true children of your father in heaven. And then this is like a cool part. I think it's like really super profound. Jesus says, for he gives sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain for the just and the unjust alike. And if you only love those who love you, what reward is there for that? So good. So what? Everybody loves their mom. Wow. Yeah. Even corrupt tax collectors, like super despised people at the time, right? They were mm -hmm. viewed as like betrayers to their nation and everything. And they like, lots of them were really corrupt, like he's saying. Even corrupt tax collectors do so much as to love their own family. If you are only kind to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Hmm. Like, wow. Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect even as your Father in Heaven is perfect. And so I think wow. that that's like, there's a lot there. <laughs> and it's hard to hear, actually. Yeah. Right? It's so challenging. When, yeah. like, of course, even your enemies love their family. Like, it's easy to just like the people, well, to love the people that are easy to love. Exactly. Right? Yeah, or yeah. easy to like, right? Yeah. I mean, that extends beyond even like somebody who's hurting you or offending you. It's like even just somebody you just are not, they're not super desirable to hang out with. Like yeah. it's easy to love the people that or are things fun not to in be common with. even. Maybe it's not like worst case scenario, mm -hmm. right? Like it yeah. should just be, nah, I don't really fuss for that exactly. person, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think that there's like three main examples that are given here of offense that mm -hmm. are like really super applicable to us still. Uh, and I think that like the first one is the slap. So if you get slapped, turn the other cheek. I think lots of people have heard turn the other cheek. Yeah. It's like, it's like a, an adage, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then the second one's the cloak. So like if someone sues you for your shirt, give them your cloak as well, which we'll get into. And then the, th did I say the second one or the third one? Second you said one, right? second. Yeah. Okay. And then third. Because then the third one. Third one. The third one <laughs> is going the extra mile. How many times have you heard that, right? Like really go the extra mile on this project tons, or whatever, you know? Tons, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so this is where like it comes from. So it's it's really interesting getting to. So I'm just gonna like talk about each one. That's good. So we can understand it a little bit better. Yeah. 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 So uh, the first one is the reference or the the example of if someone slaps you, turn the other cheek. And the basic understanding of this is really quite simple. It's just don't hit back. And the idea is that hitting back just perpetuates violence. It just extends the cycle of violence. Like when you strike somebody back, you're just hurting another person and then there's more desire for them to get revenge on you. James and George, please listen to what <laughs> Ethan is saying. <laughs> just get straight at it by your... Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no shame, no shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's like the basic principle of it is just like straight up, just don't hit back. It's pretty straightforward in its message. Um, but there's actually like, you could go a little bit deeper and maybe pull out some little nuggies of juicy information if you go into the historical yeah. context. Mm -hmm. So like with the whole slap, some people like uh, scholars who like research this time and stuff say that this slap could be referring to uh, like a backhanded slap. You were telling me this, yeah. Yeah, this like kind of blows my mind because I never mm -hmm. thought of this before until I read it. Um, where like a backhanded slap in the culture would have been like how you'd like treat a slave, like how you'd like really like degrading, kind degrade of somebody. Yeah, that's yeah. the word. Uh, and Can I so, try it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I won't hit you back. Don't hit me back. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's uh, the the idea of this backhanded motion striking somebody on the face. You could consider that if you're to turn the other cheek after you're struck, it's to ask them to strike you with an open, open hand, hand. Yeah. and the open hand would be like as an equal. That's how you'd like. So like striking, apparently everybody's just slapping everybody all over the place because there's like different types of slaps for people. Yeah. It's like different smiles for different people, except slaps. Um, but so the backhand is like degrading, but then the slap with an open hand is like as an equal, like how yeah. you would treat somebody who like you're feuding with a neighbor or something who has equal status with you in your city or your town or your culture. Uh, and so the idea you could kind of pull out of that is like, yeah, just straight up don't hit back. But also you can kind of add something constructive as well to say, 
okay, you hit me, I'll absorb that, I'll absorb that harm and I won't repay it to you. I'll just take the burden of that. Mm. But I'll say here, strike me again, but this time is your equal to understand that like, I don't just accept that you're going to degrade me like that. Wow. Which is like really cool. It's like an yeah. extra little layer. So that's kind of like the deep cut on that one, you know? I like that though. That's what the cool part about looking into the background or to the history or the culture mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. is sometimes these one sentences can mean so much more, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure like you're talking about different slaps. Like I think there's like competitions now that you like <laughs> yeah. slap people as hard as you can. Yeah, anyway. they like grab the table and they like, <laughs> and the guy crazy. just crazy. <laughs> Anyways, that was what when you said different types yeah. of slaps. That's yeah. what I was envisioning. Dang. It's crazy. It's concussion city, Anyways, man. Okay, oh, number two. What was your second one? Okay, so the, yeah, that's the first one. The slap. The second example that he gives is the cloak. So if you're sued in court and they take your shirt from you, give also your cloak. And so the basic uh, point of this is really just to give what isn't required and to use opportunities, even if you're mm. being like you're losing, like in a court situation. There's definitely like a winner and a loser. Yeah. Definitely. So if you're losing, to still take the opportunity to actually like give something constructive to the situation and to be like, well, you can have this. You're not asking for it even, but mm -hmm. here you go. Uh, and that's kind of just like the basic of it. But the deep cut, I think on this one's pretty crazy too. Because in the historical culture, uh, basically people would wear two garments. It would be like an inner and outer garment, yeah. like a shirt and a cloak situation. Uh, and the idea of this imagery of somebody losing their shirt is like off their body, like off their person. People mm -hmm. didn't just have like wardrobes of multiple rows of shirts, No, right? it was what was on their body. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And maybe maybe like well off people would have a, another set of something at home or something like that. But uh, this imagery, like a lawsuit in the time was like a very costly affair. It's actually not too dissimilar from now. Right. Where yeah. like, if you're gonna go take somebody to court over like a petty claim or something. There's like a lot of money involved. You're ready to pay some money yep. for it and stuff. Yeah. But this imagery of somebody winning in court, so having taken a matter to court and ending up taking a shirt from like you in the example, is like either that's the only thing they could possibly like gain from you. Mm -hmm. So like, that's like how meager your possessions are, which shows a really, like a position of unjustness, right? Where mm -hmm. like someone who's really well off is like suing you for whatever reason. And all you got is your shirt on your back. Yeah, they're like, well, whatever I can take from you, I'll take from you. It's yeah. like this great injustice, you know? It's crazy. And like to think about that is like, oh, so this is not just like a normal harm, but, but then to think, give your cloak too. It's like in that like court situation, if they're in a room or wherever, like taking off your cloak and giving it too, like you'd be naked. Yeah. <laughs> just be well, and giving there. the extra. It's the extra, not yeah. just what's been asked of them, but the Absolutely. extra, right? Yeah, and to do that at the cost of being buff before everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Humiliated, too, yeah. like, right? And so with that, it's kind of interesting because the constructive thing to give to it is to be like, well, it's kind of showing this person, like, these are the repercussions of what you're demanding of me. Like, you're taking what's off of my back. So here, you know, you, you can have this, too, because even though it's... Like, that's all I have to give you. That's and crazy. it's almost like you could, like, show the person how wrong they are by just, like, being naked. Take it all. Which is crazy. Yeah. Also, uncomfortable for me to think about because we're not in a culture where being naked is really cool. <laughs> or that people have one shirt and one cloak. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to even think about that, right? Yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's like, the deep cut of the, uh, of the lawsuit one. Yeah which is pretty wild to me. And then what about the extra mile one? Because that one we hear all the time. Just yeah. go the extra mile. Yeah, it's super popular. Mm -hmm. So the basic point of going the extra mile is really uh, like if you're required to go a mile, go another one and use your opportunity to serve. Yeah. Uh, and the idea of the requirement of going a mile is actually because at the time, the Roman occupation of Israel, like Rome was like in charge and uh, the Israelite civilians would be like, they, they could be ordered to do different things because of the military controlled occupation that was happening. Mm -hmm. And one of those things was that Roman soldiers could ask a civilian to carry their gear for a mile legally, and you couldn't refuse. It was just and like only a, a mile. Only a mile. No more than a mile. No, nope, just one mile. And so to say, well, when you've gone that mile, go an extra double, double your efforts to help that person. Jesus is really saying, like, the face of the persecution and oppression in your country actually serve that person and give something to them instead wow. of like being a grumbler who's like, okay, I did a mile, I'm done, I'm out of here. He says, actually, like you could give more 
Even though they were being forced to do it. Yes, exactly. It's cr that's crazy. That blows my mind. Blows my mind. Like, it's, it, it, like, I can't think of, like, being legally forced to doing something and then, like, opting to give more. When you feel oppressed, right? When you feel, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's crazy. And so it's just this little way where an individual is actually able to, you know, give a little bit back. And the, the deep cut of that is actually a little bit nuanced, too, in the sense that if a Roman soldier made somebody carry more than one mile, mm -hmm. they could be in big doo-doo. Like, they could get in trouble. Oh, right, yes. Because they would be breaking the law, and, like, you're not, like, even as crazy oppressive as the Roman Empire was in different areas, like, they had rules. <laughs> and so that soldier could have been in, pro in trouble if they were to force someone to do that. And so for a civilian to offer that is, like, they wouldn't get that any other way unless somebody voluntarily gave that extra mile of travel. And can you imagine just like, hey, I'll take it even further for you. Yeah, yeah, just for the heck of the conversation. Even though you're you know? forcing me to do this and yes. treating me badly, I'm yeah. just gonna keep on carrying And it. no minivans, right? This was like sandals on a road. How did they even track how far it was? Uh, well, actually, that's really interesting. The Roman Empire, like, was crazy advanced in this stuff. So, like, the, you know, all roads lead to Rome. Mm -hmm. They paved, like, a crazy amount. But then they also had, like, mile markers sometimes. So, you know the term milestones? Yes. Some people say that's from the Roman from Empire. From there. So, yeah. yeah. That's good. Now what? Okay, Ethan. Mm -hmm. Now what? You, so you what? gave us some, like, or so what? <laughs> Why <laughs> yeah. do we care? Why do we care what we just talked about? What, what are we going to do going forward this week? Can we do anything yeah. different with our lives? Well, I'll tell you what I think. Like, for me personally, what it challenges me to do is to, like, take this view that Jesus presented, which is instead of contributing to destructive cycles in the world. Mm -hmm. Which um, is easy to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, instead of contributing to that, like stop the cycle, break the cycle of destruction in terms of like offense and like harming others. And instead try to come up with creative, constructive solutions. Mm -hmm. Try to offer something that actually is constructive in a situation that otherwise is detractive, like something that might be detractive to my own personal gain. I can try to actually offer something to build up in that situation. Mm -hmm. And like, I think that that's, the point that Jesus is saying is find creative, constructive responses to otherwise destructive situations. And especially because like a lot of people just always say, well, they're doing it or mm -hmm. it's like sometimes you just got to break a cycle. Mm -hmm. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and I know you're talking about something a little bit different, but mm -hmm. a lot of times we just do it because culturally it's OK to keep doing it. Yeah. Right. And he kind of goes, well, Jesus always goes against what the culture yeah, is saying. Right? Exactly. And it's kind of hard because there's no like rule for this. It's not right. like in such and such a, a, like a circumstance, always do A. Right. Like there isn't, the point is, is actually to keep it subjective, to keep it like case by case, because it's really about the heart of the interaction that you're having. Because if it was the like, heart. okay, we yeah. take this super, if we take it really literally, it's like, okay, you go to court and somebody sues you, always give them something on top of whatever they win from you. Like, that's not the point. The point is, is like a creative, constructive response. And like, that's the heart of God. And I think like, especially with the slap one, we might be tempted to think like, well, isn't that weak? You know, Does it, doesn't that come off as powerless if you don't strike back, Very you know? Very true, yeah. And like a slap is something most of us could Or revenge, like, everybody likes to be yeah, even. Yeah, any form even, of revenge. Even, everything has to be even. Yeah, uh, yep. getting back at people, trying to level things out for your own sake, you know? And, and the crazy thing is like, if we view that as powerless or, or weak, like the crazy examples at the end when, when it's like God gives everybody the same thing even though there are people that like hate God and hate others, like everybody gets the same rain and sun. Mm -hmm. And like that agricultural so reference, which I think in Saskatchewan we can get, mm -hmm. you know, you need that rain and sun. It goes equally to everybody, regardless of whether they're good or bad. And that's the kindness of the heart of God. And so if we think it like comes off as weak or powerless to like not add to something, to me, the takeaway is actually it's the harder thing to actually make the move to offer something constructive. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's my big takeaway is like, how can I find those constructive opportunities to give? Yeah. And I like what you said about the heart because, you know, it's easy to put rules in place or laws in place and it become this legalistic thing. Mm. But what if it's searching to do the right thing in your heart, like going that extra mile? Yeah. Like we talked yeah. about that. A little bit of thing. introspection. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, breaking the cycle of whatever's happening. So, mm -hmm. no, that's super good. It actually kind of goes together even with what Jordan was saying last week about, mm. you know, when Jonah's deciding where he wants to go and Jonah just decides that those people are just way too bad. Yeah. Way too, they're way too sinful to have any 
any of God's grace and God's love and mercy. And mm -hmm. it's not true. Yeah. Right. Both places did. All people do. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. Well, yeah. awesome. It's so good. I'm so glad that you came on this episode. Um, you'll have to let us know what you think, because maybe we'll have him on here more if needed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes. There's You're been like, a lot of, <laughs> maybe it's been a tough day. <laughs> There's been a lot of laughter around here, which is good. And it's good for the soul. So I appreciate it. So. Um, so yes, join us next time. Um, mm -hmm. We are so excited that we were able to do this today and get outside today. And mm -hmm. yeah, so you've watched unedited with us today. And now Ethan gets to say goodbye with me. And uh, well, it's not Ethan. It's not Jordan. Not Jordan. Not Jordan is going to give me a cheers. So join us next time on unedited. <laughs> <laughs>